is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I have your WWE SummerSlam 2020 predictions. We got SummerSlam coming up on this Sunday. We got Go Home Show for Friday Night SmackDown tomorrow night. And, uh, you know, there's some matches on this card that I'm looking forward to. I honestly, looking at the card, I don't feel like it's SummerSlam. It just doesn't scream SummerSlam to me. I feel like we got a lot of rematches on here. We got a bunch of matches on here that I'm just not that much invested into. I am hyped for a couple of them, you know. I am hyped for a couple of them. I'm hyped to see where a couple of these things go and things of that nature. But overall, just not very hyped for the overall card. But maybe they'll impress me. You know, that seems to be the case. We've stated a lot here on the channel where when I'm going into a pay-per-view and the card doesn't look that great, if I'm not that excited for it, it ends up doing a lot better and being a better wrestling show overall than how I'm feeling about it going into the show. So will that be the case here, guys? I guess we're going to find out. But you know how this works. We're going to run through the entire SummerSlam card, give you my thoughts and predictions on the feud coming in, what I expect out of the match, who I think is going to win, where we go from here, maybe fantasy book it a little bit, and uh, just get through this card and let you guys know my personal thoughts and predictions on SummerSlam 2020. So with that being said, guys, let's dive into this card and see what the hell's going on. Alright guys, so we're starting things off with the Raw Tag Team Championship match. Now, I don't have, I mean, I have a couple of these figures, but since we don't have official figures of the Street Profits and we don't have an Angel Garza just yet, I'm just going to give you my prediction here. I think since the Street Profits haven't done that much with the Raw Tag Team Championships, this is a perfect opportunity to put the titles on Andrade and Angel Garza. Let them run their shot. I think they're a pretty talented team. Individually, they're great as well. And I think it's just time to get the Street Profits titles off. You know, they, they've been kind of lackluster. They did all the weird stuff with the Viking Raiders and I just want to see something new and fresh here. And I think Andrade and Garza have a lot of potential for the future. So I say give them the Raw Tag titles. See what we can do and probably pick up this division. I'm going to go with Angel Garza and Andrade to become your new Raw Tag Team Champions. The next match we're getting into, guys, is the Hair vs versus hair match that is taking place between Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Now, will this match be that great? I don't know because, you know, hair matches, they kind of come with a little bit of craziness going on. You know, there's some added drama to the mix. Both these ladies, I'm sure, do not want to lose their hair. I'm somewhat invested in this feud because of how good the ladies have been in this feud. I think it's a blood feud. You know, they have used to be they used to be partners together. Sonya Deville has been so fantastic on the mic in this feud. I think that she is one of the most underrated talents on the mic in the entire company. I think she may be the best women's talent on the microphone that is on the current main roster and she could be in all of WWE. She is a natural on the mic. I think she's fantastic. I've commented on this many times on Twitter. She she is really really good. I'm very high on Sonya Deville and I think Mandy Rose has improved a lot as well and I'm actually looking forward to this. I, I want to see how this thing goes. As far as losing this, I really hope that Mandy Rose loses because I want Sonya Deville to stay in that dominant role. I heard behind the scenes that she actually has creative freedom over her promos and her character and things. So that may, that that could be the reason why it sounds so good and natural when she's on the mic. The more I think about it, the more I think about her shaving her head, I feel like I could see that more than with Mandy Rose. So I don't know exactly what we're going to get here. It's very tough to call, but I'm going to go with Mandy Rose defeating Sonya Deville. I'm going to go with Sonya Deville losing. I don't know why. I could just see Sonya Deville shaving her head over Mandy Rose. And Mandy Rose just cut, you know, she just got her hair cut short. Pretty sure that was at the hands of Deville anyways. But I'm going to go with Mandy Rose to win. Even though I want to see Sonya win, I... I'm, I'm high on that happening. I want that to happen really, really badly. I just feel like Mandy Rose is not going to be shaving her head, so I'm going to go with Rose to win here. Next up, guys, we have the United States Championship match between Apollo Crews and MVP. However, the Hurt Business is banned from ringside. Bobby Lashley, Shelton Benjamin will not be allowed to be at ringside, so that is a very big storyline coming in because, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know, too much power over here from the Hurt Business, the, the big faction over on Monday Night Raw, running rough shot, and Apollo Crews honestly has beaten MVP before. I feel like this is just a dumb rematch. I really do not want to see this matchup take place again, but I guess it's more of a storyline build, except, you know, I, I just felt like if Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin were at ringside with MVP, there'd be no way for Apollo Crews to win, especially since he's won already. And since this is another rematch, I feel like he's going to lose. But since they got banned from ringside, there's definitely a chance for Apollo Crews to win. But I'm going to give you guys a little fantasy booking idea here, and you guys can tell me what you think about it. But this is how I see this thing playing out. You guys know that Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin are banned from ringside, but it is not banned from ringside that, you know, somebody else could come down and help MVP. So for that reason, I'm going to say 
that Cedric Alexander comes down and helps out MVP and turns right there. And uh, we have a heel turn by Cedric Alexander. Apollo Crews will lose the U.S. Championship and uh, Cedric Alexander will join the Hurt Business. Because you guys know that Cedric Alexander is not mentioned there. You know, he's not banned from ringside. He could come down and help MVP and that's how I'm going to book it. You know, I, not the way I would book it. I do kind of want to see what Cedric can do in a heel role. However, I didn't want to see Apollo Crews lose the U.S. Championship, especially to MVP and in, in this in this Hurt Business and stuff like that. I was really happy for Apollo and the booking that he's had over the last few months, but it looks like it is going to be coming to a crashing halt and I do see him losing the U.S. Championship by some shenanigans here at SummerSlam and yeah, that, that's about it. Alright guys, next up we're going to be talking about not only the Raw Women's Championship match, but also the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Bayley and Asuka and Sasha Banks and Asuka taking place at SummerSlam. Asuka going to do double duty here at SummerSlam. Now there's two ways this thing can go. It's either going to be both retain or it's going to be both lose. Now I do not see them both losing, so I think both of them are going to retain. I still stand strong on my, my Survivor Series Big AF match between Bayley and Sasha Banks that we have been building to forever and ever it seems like. I think that we're going to get both women defeating Asuka, even though that makes Asuka look terrible. She is serving double duty, so I guess, you know, she's going to have one match early in the night, probably start off the show with one of these matches, and then maybe the fifth match in, we'll probably get another one out of Asuka. And I think that Bayley and Sasha will both retain their championships, and they will end up fighting at Survivor Series title for title in a big AF matchup, losing their women's tag team championships along the way. I think that's the best thing for them. I think that would be the best story. I don't think it would be a good idea to have them both lose the titles to Asuka. You guys know that Asuka did win the SmackDown Women's Battle Royal. I don't even know why that had to be a thing. You could have given it an opportunity to somebody else, but I guess you could say that they were trying to save Bianca Belair. They were trying to save Shayna Baszler from losing here in these matchups because they want their Bayley versus Sasha matchup, which is what I'm, I'm guessing. But overall, I'm going to go with Sasha and Bayley both retaining. It just makes the most sense. I love Asuka, but it just doesn't make sense at this moment for her to win both championships here. So I am going to go with Sasha and Bayley to retain both their championships and see where we go from there. Next up, guys, we do have the street fight between Dominic Mysterio taking on Seth Rollins in a matchup that I literally do not give a crap about. I think the story has been there. I think they've done a great job building up the story, but I just do not want to see Dominic in this high capacity matchup at SummerSlam. I just do not want to see it. I would much rather see Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins in a singles matchup. I know that what they built up and you know all the, the personal business that they've gotten into with this feud and the eye for the eye and all that good stuff. So honestly I, I thought that after the eye for an eye match that would be the end of the feud, right? I thought that would be Rey Mysterio going away, Dominic going away, and then Seth doing something new for SummerSlam, but I guess we have this long built rivalry kind of feud coming in. Uh, we've had just wicked kendo stick shots. You know, uh, in my fantasy booking video, I did say that they needed to change the stipulation of this matchup. They did end up doing that. They switched it to a street fight, which was absolutely necessary. It is kind of weird that we got an eye for an eye match and then the next match is a street fight, but it is Dominic Mysterio instead of Rey, but I just don't want to see Dominic in this matchup. I know that they, they trust Seth Rollins enough to put him in a match with Dominic here in a high profile matchup. I'm just not invested in Dominic. I feel like he has a long way to go on the mic. I'm, I'm not a big fan of what he's been doing. And I know I haven't seen him in a matchup. It may change after the matchup at SummerSlam. I may be the biggest Dominic Mysterio fan of all time. But at this juncture not that high on him. Would much rather see so, uh, Seth Rollins in a different kind of matchup for SummerSlam. But since Rey Mysterio is back and you know I thought that it was just going to be Dominic versus Seth Rollins but now that Rey is back and they've kind of gotten their revenge on Seth. I kind of want to see Seth Rollins win here. I feel like Seth Rollins could win this matchup, the street fight. I just think it would kind of be Bush League to see Dominic beat Seth Rollins, unless it's in a dirty fashion or in a in a help situation where Rey Mysterio saves Dominic and then he ends up winning. Unless Rey Mysterio does help Dominic, then Seth Rollins absolutely needs to win this matchup. You do not need Dominic to beat Seth Rollins straight up with no help at all. And I know that Murphy and Rey Mysterio are in their respective corners, so I'm sure we're going to get shenanigans and plenty of stuff. It's no DQ, so I guess anything goes. I really really want to see Seth Rollins win this matchup but I would not be shocked by a Dominic Mysterio win but I'm going to go Seth Rollins. I'm going to go Seth Rollins and just hope and, and just plead to that and just hold on to that and hopefully that comes true but let me know what you guys think of Dominic down in the comment section below. Are you hyped about this matchup or, or do you feel the same way I do? Let me know what you think.
Next up is the match that I'm probably the most looking forward to. We have Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton battling for the WWE Championship. Now, this is probably the hottest babyface in all of wrestling, going up with the biggest heel in all of wrestling right now. Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre set on a collision course here for SummerSlam. Really hyped for this matchup. Both guys have done a fantastic job building to this match. The promos between the two, the intensity between the two. I'm ready for this thing to pay off. I cannot wait to see what we get, and I honestly do not know which way this thing can go because in my fantasy Fantasy booking video I even touched on it I do not know how the hell they're gonna book this I could see Randy Orton winning I could see Drew McIntyre winning I could see them thwarting this you know big heel run that Randy Orton has built up and I could see them thwarting the big babyface run that Drew McIntyre has been on I've been saying it for months upon months that I thought that Drew McIntyre would hold the championship until we got to a live crowd where that he can react the crowd could witness him as champion and uh, he would definitely hold it until then but I'm not sure if you know that has gone sour I'm I'm not exactly sure what they're thinking. I thought maybe, you know, we would end this thing with a run-in by somebody, Dolph Ziggler or Edge or, or somebody like that. Christian, maybe. Big Show. I mean, Randy Orton has got a lot of enemies out there on this run that he has been on, punt-kicking everybody and being a dick. But man, this one's a really tough one to choose. I could see it going to a no-finish or a disqualification finish, possibly, but I don't think people would be too happy about that, but when has WWE ever gave a damn about that? I don't know, man. This one's a really, really difficult one for me to, to predict. But I kind of want to go, uh, I think I'm going to go Drew McIntyre. I think I'm going to go Drew McIntyre to retain. I think something's going to take place. I don't know what the hell's going to go on, but something will take place while Drew McIntyre does retain. If Randy Orton wins, I'll be absolutely okay with that, but I could see Drew McIntyre retaining. I'm just going to go with the retain because I have other predictions for this show, so I'm just going to go with Drew McIntyre. It could be wrong. I don't know, but I kind of low-key want Randy Orton to win this matchup. But anyways, Drew McIntyre to retain. And then for our main event, guys, we have the Universal Championship match between The Fiend Bray Wyatt taking on Braun Strowman, who's kind of did like a, I feel like, what did he turn heel the other night? It kind of seemed like The Fiend's going to be the babyface, and Braun Strowman's going to be the heel in this thing, I guess. Might be wrong about that, but ball Braun Strowman taking on The Fiend, I think that The Fiend's going to win here. I think The Fiend's going to capture the Universal Championship, hold it until Roman Reigns can come back and dethrone The Fiend. I just see that taking place. I hear on the cusp that apparently Goldberg's supposed to be coming back. I mean, my God, when, when will the show Raid in. I do not want to see Goldberg in any capacity around WWE. Oh man. But I think The Fiend will win hopefully with, you know, with help from Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss and The Fiend align there together and we get a Braun Strowman loss. The Fiend wins the championship and then they book him correctly. But I'm pretty sure that's how this thing's going to go. I could see The Fiend absolutely winning and I just, I want to see that. I just don't think Braun's been a very good champion. I want to see something new and fresh here. And I know The Fiend's been champion before but I, I hopefully we get a new and fresh style Fiend and it's not the same stuff going on, but I don't know, man. I'm going Fiend. I'm going Fiend to win the Universal Championship, and that's going to do it for your SummerSlam 2020 predictions. Again, not looking forward to a lot of matches on this car, but I am kind of excited to see where things go, how it plays out, who ends up winning, who ends up losing, where the feuds go from here, but that pretty much does it for your SummerSlam 2020 predictions, guys. Let me know what your predictions are down in the comment section below. If they end up adding any other matches to this card, like Matt Riddle versus Trash Corbin, I'm going to go with Matt Riddle to win, and if they add any other other matches to the card I will comment down in the comment section with my predictions on to that so you guys can see what takes place and what I think I'll pin it at the top of the comment section but thank you guys for watching subscribe to the channel follow me on Instagram and Twitter my damn toys let me know what you think of SummerSlam 2020 down in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the next video thank you